Hey everyone, and welcome to this video, which is a part of my Unity Catalog series. In this video, I'll show you how to access data in your Azure Data Lake storage account from Databricks using Unity Catalog's storage credentials and external locations. A storage credential represents an authentication and authorization mechanism for accessing data stored in your cloud tenant. An external location is an object that combines a cloud storage path with a storage credential that authorizes access to the cloud storage path. If you followed my previous videos in this series, then I've already demonstrated how to create a storage credential and external location so that we can use our own provisioned Azure storage account as the root storage for our Unity Catalog Metastore. So this video is very similar in terms of the process, but the use case this time will be to access data stored in the external cloud storage location. So I have this Azure storage account called ext storage 001. Within that, I have a container called sample data. In this container, I have a single data file. It's a CSV called customers.csv. I'd like to be able to read and write files to and from this storage container from my Databricks environment. To do that, I need to set up access to this cloud storage container for my Databricks account. Prior to Unity Catalog, to access data from cloud storage, you could use a shared access token, access keys, and create a service principle and mount Azure storage containers directly to the Databricks file system. But now with storage credentials and external locations on Unity Catalog, you have simplified and centralized management, you have fine-grained access control and better audit and compliance. So the high level process for setting up access is as follows. You create an access connector for Azure Databricks. You give that access connector storage blob data contributor access to the cloud storage account. And then finally, you create a storage credential and external location. You can then access the data by simply specifying the URL of the storage path. Okay, so let's begin. Let me start by creating an access connector for Databricks. So in the global search bar, search for access connector for Azure Databricks. Here it is. Great, so create a new one. Select your resource group and give it a name. I'll just call mine AC EXT Storage UK South, and then select your region. Make sure the region is the same as your Databricks workspace, and then review and create. Okay, so the deployment is complete. So now let's give this access connector storage blob data contributor access to our storage account. So search for storage accounts, and locate the external storage account. So this is it for me. And then under IAM, and I'm just gonna do it at the storage account level, although you can do it at the container level as well. So I will add a role assignment and I'll search for storage blob data contributor. Here it is. Click on next and under members, select manage identity, select members, and then locate your access connector for your data brick. So here it is ext storage, select, review and assign. Okay, so the role assignment has been added. As you can see, here it is. So now finally, we just need to create the storage credential and external location on Databricks. So in our Databricks workspace, which is here for me, go on the Catalog Explorer, under external data, click on storage credentials and then create credential. So give the credential a name. I'll just call mine ext storage credential. And then we need to specify the access connector ID. This is simply the resource ID for the access connector that we created. So if you go to the access connector on the overview page, you should see the resource ID. Just simply copy that and then paste that here. And now we're ready to create the storage credential. 
So we've created the storage credential. We can also manage permissions to the storage credential. So only users, groups, or service principles that we give access to the storage credential can use it. And as you can see, here are the privileges. You can create an external location, create an external table, read and write files, and you can also give all of these privileges as well. To delete the storage credential, simply click on the ellipsis and then delete. Okay, so now we're ready to create an external location. So go on external locations and then click on create location. So give your external location a name. So I'll just call mine ext storage and then location. And then select the storage credential. And this is the one we just created. So I'll select this one. Great. So now we need to specify a URL to the storage container and it needs to be in this format, abfss colon slash slash container name at storage account name dot dfs dot core dot windows dot net. So I will just start typing it in the comment and I'll paste it in. So abfss and then the container name, which I can actually just double check here. If I go to storage accounts, containers, it should be sample hyphen data. Here it is. So sample data at ext storage 001, which is the storage account name, as you can see here, dot dfs dot core dot windows dot net with a slash. So let's paste that in here. And you can also specify the path relative to the container as well. But I just want to give, I want to create this external location at the point of this container. So let's create. Okay, so we can also test the connection and that's successful. And similarly, just like with storage credentials, you can give permissions and you can also delete it by clicking on this ellipsis here. Cool, so now let's check that we have access to the external location using dbutils. I'll try to list the contents of this sample data container. And you can see there is just one file. So let me go on my workspace and I will add a new notebook. And I will simply type dbutils.fs.ls and I will specify the path to the container. So that will be abfss colon slash slash sample data at ext storage 001.dfs.core.windows.net with a slash. So let's run that. And as you can see, that's worked. And you can display this in a nicer tabular format by using the display function. So as you can see, here is the file that's stored in this storage container. So we now can access this external storage in our Databricks environment. So let me actually read in this customers.csv file into a Spark data frame. So to do that, I can just do spark.read.csv, specify the path, and then just say header as true, and then let me display that. And as you can see, that's worked. So using this external location, we can read, write, and create external tables to this location, as well as its subfolders. Great. In this video, I demonstrated how you can use a Unity Catalog storage credential and external location to access data stored in an external cloud storage container in Azure. If you found this video useful, then please give it a like and subscribe to my channel for more content like this.